What are we having for breakfast today, Melanie? It's a pancake. Did you see it? <laughs> oh, you're smart, Melanie. And what is on your pancake? It's a blueberry jam that blueberry. I made. That you made out of blueberries we yeah. picked? Melanie, is it good? <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little warped in the morning before I had enough coffee. But it's good stuff from the homestead, from our own land. Thank you, Melanie. You're welcome. No, people, I'm not weird. It's just morning. <laughs> good morning, everybody. I am sort of out of breath. I just finished cleaning up the backyard. Some of you will notice a difference here, except for the little pile of chicken coop construction materials. Everything is gone. I got to get rid of those, uh, there was old burn barrels that were here and there's a whole ton of garbage. They put everything, there's plastic and glass and junk in there like you wouldn't believe. So we're still hauling garbage out. Um, you know, when you take over somebody's home, you're going to get some garbage. That's just a, oh no, oh no. My chickens are outside. Why are my chickens outside? Uh-oh, talk to you later. And when they start to turn towards you, get lower. Go real slow. See, they'll stay by the chicken coop. They'll stay by what they know. Go real slow, don't try to rush them. Don't try to bum rush them. Go up, go out into the forest and go wide, Sam. Go left wide. Right there. Yeah, there you go. Go wide. You want to lead them is what you want to do. And they're going to run to me. The white ones I'm not so stressed about because they're friendly, but the, the others are wild. Real slow now. Slow. Really, really slow, okay? Really slow now. Now, don't move fast. Very slow. Very, very slow, Sam. <laughs> Push her to me. Thank you. Now you can pick her up. She's alright. She's a nice bird. She's a good bird. No, go slow. She's a nice bird if you go slow. Go slow. There you go. Now you can pet her. No? Okay. Well, that wasn't so bad. Did we get them all? Wow. We did it. All right, guys, normally it's hilarious running around and looking stupid, but uh, Sam and I worked pretty good as a team and got him in there. I don't know what happened. But that was well done, Sam. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, we got him in. I was talking about how we cleared this place up. I, why me, everybody else, they didn't know where I was at the time. So anyway, I cleaned this all up. Got the chicken uh, wire and the wood scraps here. All you see, um, even the metal sheets are gone. All the um, wood scraps, the uh, OSB sheets I put away. Everything's cleared up except for the metal barrels I got to get rid of yet. Looking good. Look at that, guys. Trying to get this place straightened up before winter. Cleaning up the homestead. I can almost call it fully off the grid. Almost. Almost. I got the solar panels. I got the wire. I got most of the wood. I had to get some bolts and we will be fully off the grid. Melanie, what's what? Um, if the sign says broccoli, then that's what we got. We got a whole mixer. Looks like a cabbage. No, that's cauliflower. This one's cauliflower. I think these are going to do good. Ooh, we'll step over the electric wire. The broccoli went wild on us. By the way, guys, I didn't put the moss all the way like I said I was going to. I wanted to experiment and see what happens and see if the moss makes a difference long term. I think this is blue cabbage. It's late season cabbage, so we're going to have early and late. These plants are happy, aren't they? Yeah. Perfect. With the cooler nights and stuff and the cooler days we're getting, these are happy plants. Look at this. I think it's a good pond that we don't put late. Look at this. 
I don't know what this is. There's a cabbage. There's a cabbage. Um, I think that's a carrot, yeah. Grew up on its own along with the onion. Our root vegetables are starting to recover. Um, they got, I don't know if they're going to make it though. They're damaged. The corn is growing, but it doesn't have time. So anyway, I think these are all going to be good because they like the colder weather. Uh, yeah, the zucchini is big. Um, these are starting to grow, but really late. So we'll see what happens. Really late. And they got the powdery mildew, which is bad. Here, it almost all but killed our pumpkin. We're not going to have pumpkins this year because the powdery mildew is wasting everything away. Right there, dying. Poor thing didn't even have a chance. Dying. All dying. Here, this one's mostly dead. It's, it's harsh in the country. Our, our, well, those are the ones you got from mom, right? Yeah. Are they ready? Yeah, that's ready. Okay. Oh, look at that. They all grew together, though. Yeah, because they were clumped. Oh, nice. That's going to be good. Good food, Melanie. Four together. He has his all purslane. Eventually, we'll harvest it and eat it. That's a very, very healthy plant full of omega 3 fatty acids. That's that flat mat of growth down in there. That's why I let it grow. And over here, the um, sorrel, that's that green leafy thing, that's actually good in lettuce uh, and salads. But it grows, it seems to love the chicken poop because it's growing super heavy in the chicken poop. Oh, Melanie, we have some well, melon or something growing. I'm not sure because of all the mix up with the plants when we started losing them. And here's something. I don't know what that is. This is the one I planted. What is it? Do you remember? Do you remember? I don't remember. Yeah, some things are. Oh, look at the peppers. Those are the biggest. I didn't see them this morning. Yeah, the bell peppers. That's the last one. You have also that was the last ones Melanie planted over here. And they're the biggest. Funny, huh? Oh yeah, we're going to have a lot of food this year, very soon. He wants to pick up some potatoes. I'm looking for the seed pods. I believe I can harvest the seed pods by now, wouldn't you think? Or should I wait until they die? I've never had potato seeds, so I don't know. Oh, there's one on the ground, so definitely that one's ready to pick up. <clears throat> That's a seed pod from a, from a potato. You should get your little shovel and rake things. That's a baby. Well, these weren't big oh. potatoes in the first place. Oh, these, uh, they're not big? They're not they were, um, the seed potatoes weren't very big. I don't know if the, the babies will be or not. So I'm looking for the seeds because then we can plant the seeds and we will um, have potatoes <laughs> next year Look from our own. They're all little. They'll be good for soups and stews. It's going to be purple. Yeah, purple potatoes. I'm surprised that they're not that big, though. I think this potato is not big. Like well, the seed potatoes were about twice that size. Really? Yeah. But oh, yeah. our potato shape before is the small. Even these will keep. We'll just, here, put them all in the, in the hole. That we have more oh. room to dig. Even I'm just using my hand. Oh, yeah. It's soft. This soil is very soft and good. There's probably a lot more than that in that. Oh, there's a bigger one. We'll get one meal from every planet, I guess. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to look for all the potato seeds off the we dead can, plants. We can make like this with tapioca. Oh, you it. smell that soil? You can smell how fertile it is, can't you? Yeah. That is fertile soil. So the seed pods, they say they have up to 200, 300 seeds per pod. And uh, you can so. plant them. And they'll grow potatoes. I think that's it. Yeah? Well, when we're, when we're done, we'll rake this up thoroughly. Well, you want to show them in your hands what we got? Here, hold up your hands. No, the potatoes. <laughs> hold up your hands. They're not huge, but... Mm. Mm -hmm. And that was the smallest, youngest, and the quickest dead plant, so... Eh, whatever. Well, there we go, guys. There's... One potato plant. That was a small plant anyway, the smallest. Some of these are still growing. So, eh, it's a meal and some onions.
All right, guys, I did harvest them all. They were falling off and they were ready to pick. So that's um, potato seeds, which is a very rare thing and only grows under certain conditions, which we happen to have. And only certain potatoes will grow the seed pods in certain conditions in certain areas. So um, this is something I've never seen before and had to look it up on the internet. Um, some people grow their whole lives without seeing a tomato seed. And so I'm gonna look up how to process these I had read it, but I want to double check. I guess you crush them and let them dry. And then you've got all kinds of seeds in there. And you can grow them from seed. But they say they won't be the same as the mother plant. There's uh, no way of being sure what the potato coming from it will be like. So it'll be fun. Also, look at this, guys. We have not had to weed our garden. Every once in a while, we'll pull something up. There's occasional pieces of grass here and there very rare weeds the um, mulch did its job and gave us a weed free and very low work garden low maintenance very very nice look at this guys this is really looking good now and we're eating a lot from it but again I have this sorrel growing everywhere the sorrel loves this, um, this soil and loves the chicken manure. Uh, we put some, Melanie put some spinachy type things in here that never did grow. The sorrel really loves it. So that's chicken manure right here. It was, shoo month or so ago I put that in there so that's breaking down look at all the, the sorrel that's that's a constant problem this stuff but it sure is tasty it's just you don't want to drink too much there's oxalic acid I think it's called um, in the sorrel which same as in spinach by the way and um, too much is not good for you the um, herbs that we planted are really bushing out nicely though look at that really bushing out nice but just got to pick all the sorrel out um some lettuce plants that mom gave us that went to seed uh, i'll let the seeds grow and we'll keep them and there's our two, there's two different kinds of oregano. What's up, Melanie? You want to say something? Nothing. Say hi to the people. Hi to the people. Hi. <laughs> okay. Literally. So this is all our, this is my hot spicy oregano, which I love very much. And, uh, Melanie, what all have you been using out here the most? Yeah. We've got some cabbage here growing. We got bok choy right here. Melanie planted the bok choy. No, we're on this one, but the one already used is the basil. The basil? So Melanie's using the basil the most. Um, our peppermint plants are going to need thinning. Look at that, how they bushed out. Really nice. The um, uh, sage. sage is looking good. My chamomile is the best I ever had. There's a weed that came on its own. Probably, uh, probably eat that. Anyway, really, really looks good, but it looks like it's getting on the end of life because it's starting to get browned and off color. Look at how many flowers we've got to harvest again. This is really great to see because I've never been able to grow it very well. This stuff here, the um, cinnamon basil and the lemon basil never really did anything. The lavender is starting to bush out now. I think it likes the cooler weather. Oops, there's grass I gotta pull out. Now these lavender plants didn't, or no, that's rosemary, didn't do anything at all this year. But um, it's filling out though. The rest of the garden is, I mean, our apple mint, big and bushy and starting to flower finally. And this is pineapple sage. Look at how big that plant is. Really nice. Now in pine bush, I couldn't grow this for anything. I could not get that to grow, and I couldn't grow chamomile. Every year for five years I lived there, I tried to grow chamomile, and I failed. It just wouldn't grow. Look at the flowers on here. 
I've harvested this 10, 15 times already. So we're 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 doing good this year here. Really looking good. Next year is going to obviously be even better. This will really fill out, and then we'll be trimming and uh, thinning next year. And then we'll take some of the plants that we prefer and put it out around the buildings to spread. Hey guys, we ripped out the damaged material from the camper and then we took out the cushions and finished cleaning inside once and for all. So all this needs to be replaced by the, uh, well with new, there was just a sheet of paneling, one sheet of paneling needs to be replaced in the ceiling and uh, that was the damage section and we finished cleaning the camper and now we're going to put uh, close it back up and get it ready for the winter so it's finally done it took us time but I had to let it dry out first to see the extent of the damage and the wood peeled and curled and fell apart that's it camper is ready for rebuilding but uh, probably won't be in use this year because of Melanie's belly well guys, we had a killing frost last night. That's so sad. Our mung beans were doing so well. <sighs> Melanie's going to be devastated. That's so sad. Oh, that's sad. It froze last night. Our garden was doing so well. This is August. It's all gone. Just a few survived oddly here and there. Oh, that's sad. Our chilies. Look at the tomato. Oh, it's frustrating. The chilies. Look at this. Oh, it's horrible. Our garden was just producing heavily. This is August. I don't think we can grow food here. Some of them are alive. This, these are they're they're collapsing. They're wilting. As the sun comes, we start to see more and more damage. Some of the peppers look like they're doing better. The tomatoes have collapsed totally in places. They're really deflated. Like here, they're really deflated. It looks like they didn't suffer as much damage, but as the sun comes up, I'm seeing more drooping. Some of the chilies are good and some are not. Looks like the Thai dragons might have survived. The um, yellow Hungarians died right away. Mung beans are complete and total loss. Oh, that's so frustrating. Our garden is just producing now. Look at this, the dark color and the wilting dying leaves now. Look at this, it's all, look. Oh, nuts. Look at that. Oh, this is sad. This is August. Look at the sickly color of this. They're dead. It froze last night. How could I have known it would freeze? The weather said it would be 42. All right? 32 is a far cry from 42. And it froze here. Even the grass froze last night. Look at the grass that got a dark color and froze last night. Look at the, our squash plant, it's destroyed. Look at the wilted leaves. Oh, this is so bad. This is August. This is gonna be a harsh environment up here. This is gonna be so harsh. And over here, the squash plants are all okay. Of course, the powdery mildew killed all these. Oh no, they're not all okay. This one's destroyed. That's a freeze, see that guys? We had freezing last night. We had a frost. That one's gone, that one's gonna die. That one's destroyed. Oh, this is harsh, very harsh environment. We had a freeze in uh, end of May beginning of June so we had July and part of August we have one and a half month growing season here 
This is really sad. All you people that call me a liar about the weather and tell me that there just must be something wrong with my weather station or I'm exaggerating, look up the weather for last night. This video is going up live today. Okay, this video is going up today. Look up the weather for Lewiston for last night and you will see it showed 42 degrees. But yet we had a frost. Okay, I'm sorry I didn't catch the ice on the ground. The sun rises early here. And because of the sandy soil, the temperature changes rapidly. Very rapidly. Once that sun comes up. But this is a result of a freeze. We had a killing frost last night. I didn't catch the thermometer, I did not catch the temperature, but the, uh, the weather station batteries had died in the night, so I can't tell you what it was this morning. Anyway, it was frozen, there was frost on the ground, and this is, all. there's so many people call me a liar and accuse me of exaggerating and stuff and saying, well, Lewiston was such and such a temperature, you're lying. There's, Lewiston has a lake effect, which smooths out the weather. Well, as the sun rises, I'll start to see the, the extent of the destruction. I can see the tomatoes are starting to droop more and more. Some, the tops of the tomatoes are all gone. The lower leaves will be protected. I can see the tops are drooping and getting worse, and the lower leaves are green and fresh. Some may survive, some might not. These beans all got frozen, you can tell the sickly color of them. The peppers got damaged. They were so good, they were doing so good. I don't know what we're gonna do here guys for next year. But there's proof guys that it truly froze last night. Now those of you, all you doubters, look at the weather for Lewiston for last night and see.